Well, hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Purposeful Marketing Podcast. This is a new thing we're going to try out. I mentioned it on a couple episodes as we brought in friend of the program, Kevin here. Hey, hey. We're going to do a essentially a performance marketer roundtable every time Kevin and I get together. And we're going to talk about things specifically for performance marketing in this role. And we thought the best thing to do is just, what the heck is a performance marketer? And like, what do they do? So to get us rolling, and we'll kind of take this a couple places, I'm going to throw it over to Kevin and like, explain to us, man, like, how would you tell a client? Like, what do you do? Like, what is your main function? Yeah, so performance marketer is a title, you know, it's, it's very similar in saying like, I'm a paid media manager or digital advertising manager. It's like, you are actually um, trafficking the digital ads on the platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn and um, uh, Google, Twitter, like whatever you're using, you're actually trafficking the ads, but then monitoring the performance, um, reporting on the performance, like um, maintaining the campaigns. It's never just like set it and forget it, right? Like there's so many things, so many levers to pull once a campaign is launched. Um, so it's kind of like combining a lot of the skills and things you need to be good at in marketing. Um, it's, it's not just math. It's not just art. Um, it's, it's kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah. And I think that's a great way of explaining it in, in an even more simple fashion. When I talk to people, I don't know, um, like you talk to your parents or your dinner table, right. And like, what do you do is essentially a performance marketer is I help understand what works and what doesn't. I think at the most basic level, that is what we do. And again, Kevin, and I both have a paid media background. That's basically what we've been doing in marketing for a while. And then when I got into the strategist role, really locked into that idea. Because to me, I think what good marketing is, is you learn from it. Like, what do you do with those learnings? And how do you apply them? Right? So I think that's where the performance market can really stick into the, the marketing function is helping us understand holistically everyone that's working on, on this marketing strategy, like what is working and what is not working. Now, both you and I kind of entered this position because it's kind of new. The job title is new. Um, do you have any thoughts with your half a year to a year working as a performance marketer? Like, did you have any expectations or are you experiencing a new reality? Like, is this different than what you thought? Um, so yes and no. Uh, I, I've been working in paid media, digital advertising, whatever you want to call it, um, for several years. The position I'm in now with Gorilla 76 is uh, it's different than what I was doing before. I was working more with like um, direct to consumer clients or um, like B2C. Now it's I'm doing much more B2B. So we're reaching very different people, um, targeting totally different types of audiences, um, different size budgets, uh, different goals, right? Like it, it's much less like sales attributed in what I'm doing now. Um, and I think too, working in B2B, like reporting and just like you're saying, finding what's working and, and identifying what isn't, isn't working is much more, uh, relevant, like with B2B, right? Cause you're, you're kind of trying to paint this much bigger picture, um, more than just, I ran this amount of budget on these ads, I got this many clicks and like this many sales. It's more like we sir, we told this story and over time this happened. Tell you, and, you know, I think I love that you spoke about that. Cause one thing I want to make clear to the listeners who again, our listeners are B2B is it's kind of easier to be paid media for B2C is or at least it's a little more straightforward. I put money in it's purchased. I understand my ROI, my, ROI, um, my ROAS. I just understand it. Right. And I try to scale that. I think what Kevin's speaking about is kind of what performance marketers should be tasked with right now is how do you tell that story over time and B2B, the sales cycle is so long, but the deals are much, much bigger. And also the dots in between are not as clear. So I think, again, if we talked about like, what is a good and what is a bad performance marketer? Um, I think that's part of the good side. Now I'll ask you that question, Kevin, like um, you actually have a performance marketer under you right now. Like, what would you tell them? Like, how can you be a good or bad performance marker? Right. Um, I mean, I think it in, in, on the B2B side, it's like you said, it's like not only being um, numbers driven and like looking at the math, 
but you need to be really mindful of the story you're telling over time and like how you're getting to where you want to get. Like, it's one thing to put up like a good looking ad for like, say you're selling like sneakers, like put up a good selling ad and like understand retargeting and um, just basic math to like get cookie somebody and get them to eventually buy the shoe at a certain margin, right? Um, this, in this case for B2B, it's like, we, if you, even if you have a creative team, like working on ads and building them out, like you need to be there. You need to be in that process on some level to see these at, like, what story are these ads telling? Are these actually reaching people, um, in their psychological, like frame of mind? on the platform, like people who act differently on Facebook versus on LinkedIn versus when they're searching on Google, like thinking of the psychology of the buyer, are you reaching them on a platform at a time, at a place where they're ready to consume that information and eventually influence them um, to, to contact, right? Um, so I think as a performance marketer, like you're, you're, you need to be good on the platform, but you're almost like a, a mini project manager. Yeah, I think that's a great point too. And I, I didn't answer the expectations versus reality. So I'm going to go back there because I think my journey was a little different going back to performance marketing here is, you know, um, I started as kind of a copywriter and a creative team. So I was writing ads, right? And then I got interested and invested in, now let me distribute them. Let me learn how to do that process. And I became a digital strategist for a while, also doing the paid media activities and I jumped a little higher into the strategist role to really talk about business and marketing goals. And goals is really important in the relationship between a strategist, director to mansion, performance marketer, however your organization is set up. Goals is that commonality between everyone that you really need to be locked into. So at a certain point, I was like, I understand how to articulate goals. <laughs> I understand how to talk to clients about goals. I think I'm actually better at getting the goal to perform. Um, and that's why I jumped back to the performance marketer side. But I think there is a big expectations versus reality gap that we need to talk about, which is I think performance marketers are asked really just to be these kind of data-driven individuals that they, they just are the math portion, right? They're not the art or the science. I think that's where, thankfully, my weird career journey is I got a little piece of everything. I actually think what makes a great um, performance marketer is someone who can do all three of those or at least have a grasp of it, right? And I think being fair to, again, our audience is maybe you're not there now, right? Is both Kevin and I are senior performance marketers. So that means we've gone through the journey to get here now. Maybe you're only good at um, the math portion. That's okay. <laughs> like that may be your reality right now. But I think kind of what Kevin was saying too is you got to be kind of a project manager. You got to understand creative. You got to understand psychology. You have to understand where the market is on these channels, if you're going to be a tactical master, like you also have to understand the human element. You also have to understand the creative element. You have to understand all these things, right? I think that kind of makes you a good performance marketer. And also that's hard, man. Like that's extremely hard. So I just want to give you a chance to respond to what I'm saying, Kevin. Totally. I, the way I always describe it is like in job interviews or whatever people are like, you know, they want to get an idea of who you are. Um, not only just like your hard skills on a piece of paper, the best way I can describe it is I'm scrappy and, and whether, you know, that's especially for somebody who doesn't understand what performance marketing is. Like if they're looking to hire somebody to help you with that, but they don't fully understand it. You just say, I'm scrappy, right? Like I can get, I I'm dangerous enough on each of those things that you were just talking about, like math, art, and science. I'm dangerous on each part to where I can actually build the entire ship you know, and make it float, but also point it in a direction. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's, um, that's really important as a performance. Marketer. Yeah. Like, you can't think of yourself as just one thing or another, like, yes, knowing how to operate on LinkedIn's ad platform is awesome, but that's not, that's only going to get you so far. Like what has really helped me take a next step in my career is understanding everything else like totally. the, the side of it and i think that goes back to expectations for reality because i think um an expectation is i believe like performance marketer needs to be like a technical and tactical master i think that's the expectation but i think the reality is 
that's not necessarily true. <laughs> what you need to be really good at, again, is what is the strategy? What is the goal? What is the most high impact, high priority thing to get there? Um, sure, it may help if I know all the ins and outs of Facebook ads, but maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe it helps if I'm better at articulating the storytelling from data to clients about why this ad works, why this resonates for the market. So I think, again, if you're starting a performance market today, maybe you're looking at the job descriptions. I think they're going to be very data heavy, but in my honest opinion, it's you got to be able to do all the other stuff. And that's really what's going to make you excel. Um, do you have any other comments on that, Kevin? Agreed. Yeah, I, I see a lot of the you know job ads out there. People just talk about like, being proficient on the platforms and like getting ROI. It's like, yeah, of course that's important. Like what we're running businesses here, right? Like it's that, that is important, but um, I, I think that just doesn't tell the entire story. Um, and really like everything you're saying too, makes me think like, I'm surprised maybe there have been, I just haven't heard about more people who were like uh, successful as marketers on other platforms, like a lot of the same concepts of advertising on old media can apply to performance marketing just because it's going from a TV screen or a radio to like a digital device doesn't throw everything out the window. And I kind of feel the same about moving forward, like into whatever is next, VR, AR, Web3, whatever. It's like a lot of the things that we know and do now are going to apply the same way to those. So it's expectations versus reality. It's like what a performance marketer is dealing on modern, like tech platforms, but these are all like concepts and ideas that are forever. For sure. I love how your brain is working right now. I'm on the same page. Cause this is going to go into like, what are challenges of performance marketers? I think one of the challenges, like, um, you should own measurement in a way. Um, at our agency, we have a, I have a marketing ops coworker, love him, makes my job a lot easier, right? But in most performance marketers um, roles, like you kind of have to own the measurement infrastructure. Also, like, what are you measuring and why? That's hard, right? Because what have we been talking about on the seasons of these episodes, but also marketers in general is attribution is harder than ever, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a challenge now is a performance marketer, maybe two or three years ago, four years ago, they had a different title, but what they were masters of is attributing marketing to revenue, attributing marketing to effort, to wins. I think now we still have to do that, but kind of what you're saying, Kevin, also is there's going to be these new things that I have no understanding at all how to attribute because they're new. Um, TikTok, we did an episode of TikTok, right? Is There's just new things that we're not going to be able to say, okay, you put money in, you get money out, and the ad platform feeds us this. That may not even exist yet with these new channels, but the fundamentals, the things that we're talking about that you also need to learn, the art, the science, the math, like those don't change, right, <laughs> in your role. Um, okay, so you have any comments on generally what I'm saying, but more specifically um, about the measurement? Yeah, so you're right. Things change very quickly. Like when iOS 14.5 rolled out, what, May 2021 was kind of, I feel like when it went, fully public, um, that changed our lives literally overnight. Like we knew it was coming, but until it actually happened and saw what was happening, um, you don't really know. So you're right. Attribution has changed. Like there were a few years there where it was like down to the penny. I spent this much. I got this much back. This is the exact thing that happened on my website from somebody who saw this ad at this time on Facebook. And a lot of that has changed now, right? Like attribution is is not nearly as accurate. There are, you know, Apple's making moves on privacy, um, which I believe is more of just a PR move for their own ad product. But there's these pushes, all of these words, like these narratives around what is happening. But you can't really be too phased by it because you can't expect that level of attribution forever, right? Like, and the way that we're going to now is like, People are almost like so crippled by, oh, I can't attribute in that same way. I'm like, well, neither could we for the previous like 100 years, Love but it. you still, you still run your marketing, run your advertising, and you can still tell whether something's working or not. Is your business going up? Are you getting more revenue? Right. And, um, 
as far as like measurement, we still have way more than we've ever had before. Mm -hmm. Like if you look on the ad platform and see, is your ad performing as far as like um, CPM, like your click through rate, your cost per click, like how much are people actually engaging with the ad? That is telling way more of a story than you could ever get from like running a local TV commercial. So you kind of have to take everything into account now mm -hmm. beyond just having some sort of attribution software that's cooking, you know, Johnny in Arkansas who, who clicked on your ad and like bought something. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I, I'm not really like freaked out by any of these mm -hmm. changes. Um, it's just, you got to adapt and who knows, we could have even better things in the future. I don't Tell know. It. Yeah. And I think, um, adaption is key for performance marketer is things are going to change, right? How you measure is going to change. I do think what you're going to be asked to own and that may not change is a metric. And I think what's difficult for performance marketers is there are so many metrics to be worried about. Right. And, um, you know, again, Peter Drucker's, if you can measure it, you can manage it. Um, I always say to clients, like we try to measure everything. We're measuring nothing. So I think a challenge for performance marketers going forward is like figuring out what that that metric cocktail is that really um, drives um, people's action because it changes. And I think what we're trying to do at, you know, Freepoint Marketing Gorilla 76 is like, we're building the next case of like, these are the metrics that matter. So I do want to offer that to the listeners is I think if you jump into this role, um, there's going to be things like that you learned in the past and may not apply today, right? So these metrics were important back then. They may not apply today, but I think what your job is to kind of help your team understand what does matter help the client understand like what should they look at and just to give some specific examples is you know Kevin's talking about revenue source marketing which will come you know maybe you don't have that right maybe you all you can do is talk about I have more um, visits to the high intent landing page I have more submissions on the high intent landing page again that's a lot better still than what he was also saying is 100 years ago when we were on the radio and like how did you measure that so I think there are ways to measure I would totally agree and they're also going to change and performance marketers need to adapt so I do want to kind of get into the next talking point to kind of wrap this up is, you know, generally we talked about the role, talked about expectations, reality, maybe some challenges um, performance marketers face. What advice do we have to performance marketers? And then also, Kevin, if you do have any more challenges, we can speak about that before we move to advice for people who want to jump into this role. People who, people who want to get started uh, or maybe have a little bit, like say you have a little bit of like platform knowledge, you know, you messed around and um, Facebook ads manager, meta, whatever we call it these days. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely tell, always tell people like start out, get, get your certifications. There's so much free information out there. There is so like, you can take free courses, you can get certified in all these different ad platforms. Um, I, I mean, Aaron and I, we both went to the same university. Like we, we got degree, we got English degrees. Um, but th that was valuable, but like, basically everything that I tangibly do day to day, I learned online through like YouTube and um, Reddit threads and um, all kinds of like podcasts, things like that. So for a performance marketer, like I would say, get your like actual hard skills down, um, like know the ad platforms, that's all free. You can do that on your own time, but just like, can like get, consume a lot of marketing information, like listen to podcasts a lot. You can do that passively, just like get yourself within the marketing mindset, consume a bunch of information. And I think you'll end up learning a lot more than you realize, even if you're not sitting there, like taking notes in front of you. Um, because that's what I did for several years I, before I even like work directly in marketing. I just, I consumed that type of information. And then when I stepped into either interviews or situations where I had to, to execute, to operate, I, I knew the lingo, like I knew what to measure. I knew these things, uh, without even really knowing that I did. That's also, I think we've never talked about this, but I took a very similar path to that. And I think it's great advice is, can you just map out in your day, like 30 minutes to learn this stuff, even if you don't know how to do it. Right. Um, all the certifications are free. Um, I don't take them anymore, <laughs> even though I'm a performance marketer, so there's something in that. But I think it's a great place to start.
because what you want to do is equip yourself when you do have the opportunity in your lap to actually do this, you can. I think just to add to that is, again, if you're in a role now in a marketing agency or in the marketing um, department, um, why don't you ask, right? Is if you ask, you shall receive. This happens all the time. Take ownership. Um, maybe you do want to test something out. Go ask your your boss or if you're agency, go ask um, whoever your leadership, like, can I run this experiment? Can I have 500 bucks to do it? Um, most people are going to say yes, right? It's like, because you came to the table with, with something new. I think I would definitely encourage people to try that because that's how I got my start was um, took the free certifications. We were hiring vendors at the agency to, to run Google ads, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads. I was like, what if I just try it for a client, right? And I did it one time. I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I think that was something maybe you and I haven't talked a lot about yet, but like you're going to make mistakes. You're going to F things up. The metrics are not going to work. Um, but guess what? You're going to learn and you did it for real. Um, before I add another advice, you have any comments on just <laughs> like making mistakes as a performance marketer? Totally. Yeah. I mean, there's there's plenty of mistakes to be made. And I think your I, your suggestion of like getting a few hundred dollars from um, your, your like in your current position is a great idea. But also like just use I, I've spent my own money to like for this stuff. Like I, I've spent my own money to run tests. Um, you don't have to spend a lot. Not everybody has the money to spare. I understand. But like I, even if it's just like 20 bucks, like and think of something, anything you want to promote, like it. Is your friend like going to be, uh, does your friend have a booth at like the local farmer's market? Like, or do you like, uh, do you make something that you sell? Do you make crafts? Like, is there anything that you want to promote at all? Just run some ads for it, like taste it. Even if those ads don't actually end up returning anything at all, you can taste what is it like when I run an ad with an objective of like brand awareness versus website traffic versus conversions. What happens? What does that mean? Like, how many people am I actually reaching? Did I set up the targeting right? Did, did was my targeting way too wide? Um, you can really start to like catch the mistakes. Maybe you run an ad and you want to reach, you know, people age 25 to 45 who are into, um, we'll use the example of like farmer's market, like somebody who's into like uh, organic foods and you want to reach that kind of person, but you didn't know about how precise you can get with your targeting. So instead you just run it to like a five mile radius around where you are and nothing happens. You're like, why did nothing, like literally nobody who saw this ad liked it or like said anything. And then you get to the point where you're like, oh, I can target people, the people I want to reach. So I, I that's something I did myself mm -hmm. um, to kind of like catch some of those early mistakes that like, 20 bucks ad that doesn't really mean a whole lot, but like, that's something you don't want to do. If you're running ads for a client that's running like two grand a month, the much difference, big, bigger difference between a $20 mistake and $2,000. Totally. So if just to summarize what we are both saying here is try it out. <laughs> um, I do think to take that another level is if you really want to get a performance marketer role is try to specialize in something. Um, to me, I think the easiest one to learn is Google ads, um, specialize in that right? That will help you get the fundamentals down. So when you're ready to move to another channel, you already know the motions, right? You already know how targeting kind of works, how to reach a goal. You already know all those aspects. So it's a lot easier to transfer another channel. The advice I want to leave with the listeners, and we'll kind of wrap up here is advice I've given to a couple of my peers at um, Gorilla76 or other people I've helped train um, to run paid media is at some point, someone's going to ask you to tell them everything. But guess what? Your job is not to know everything. It's to help the people in the room understand what they should know. I think that is the most important thing is you're going to be asked these questions about how does Google ads work and why do they do this? You are not the Oracle of these ad platforms, but what you can be is you can be that North star helping people understand where we need to go. Like that is just so vitally important to being a good performance marketer. I think it takes reps to get there may take a strategist mindset to help you get there. But if you really want to excel at this career, that's why I would leave the listeners with. All right, everyone. So appreciate you. We're going to do more of these. I think we'll do some episodes where we break down um, channel specific things, maybe tactic specific things. Um, Kevin got my mind going on maybe an episode is like how to run an experiment and why. Um, we're going to break down all that. This is going to be a little more tactical than with Mary James and I. I'm also expect some new guests to be on the show. 
podcast is growing. It's going to be a great year as we go in 2023. So I appreciate you listeners and have a good one. Thank you.